You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Lucas Zanna on United States FM Network. Our number two. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna. This is probably one of my most favorite hours. You know, I like them all. I like the first hour. We talk about freedom. We talk about news and rights. Final hour, of course, is kind of uh, wild. It's love. As you see, many different things we can touch. And we'll, by the way, don't miss the final hour. It's going to be interesting, interesting guest. But this uh, is going to be something practical today. Like normally I like to do during the second hour. It's about guns. You know, for me, um, I never own a gun for hobby. For hobby, I like to look at the stars. On top is much more, let's say, uh, affordable. Okay, it's free. Uh, guns, uh, it's a tool. It, it also, for me, is a symbol. It's a symbol of freedom. I don't know even hunt, honestly. You know, I'm not here for hunting. I don't use hunting or for sports. My guns, none of my guns are for sports. For sports, I like to jog around my neighborhood, or, you know, around my block with my rifle. That's my sport. But regardless, what I say, the gun is a tool. I call it also, it's a great equalizer. It's an opportunity and it's a right. That's the most important thing, in my opinion, especially in America, we have their right. The right to defend ourselves, our families, and also our freedom, if we have to, against uh, evil. Simple as that. And you know what is beautiful about gun? It's the most, uh, let's say, democratic, if you want to use the word that I hate, by the way. It's, you know, we're not about democracy, it's about freedom here. But let's say it's a great equalizer. We are all equal. Or at least we all have the equal opportunity to defend ourselves. I don't care if you're an 80-year-old year lady or if you're like, you know, let's say a person with disability or if you're a single mom. The moment that you have the weapon, you have the right mindset, you have the right, of course, training, you have an opportunity to be equal to the evil adversary that is facing you. I don't care if the guy is 300 pounds and you're just maybe 80 pounds a lady. You have the opportunity to be equal, to face the evil and hopefully prevail. And hopefully you don't even have to face it at all because that's the right we, as the, you know, General Sun Tzu, the best victory of the general is the one, is the, the war that you don't have to fight. Let's not forget that. Anyway, for me, this is a great opportunity also to uh, remind you that uh, the most important thing we have when we have their right is also responsibility because with freedom comes responsibility. You know, in Arizona, you do not need to have any type of uh, paperwork. We have uh, since 2010, uh, the constitutional carry. So you can pretty much carry a gun outside, you know, in public, privately, excuse me, everywhere, concealed, almost everywhere. But the point is, with that freedom comes with responsibility and our responsibility is to learn, to always be the best we can be because this is not a game. It's a huge responsibility. We're talking about death or life and liability. So that's why I always say, for me, the learning experience never ends. I'm always here, try to learn new things. And my attitude is, I am a professional student. That's what I am. I study, I always study. There is always something new to learn, trust me. And that's why I found in Las Vegas, a great opportunity through a very professional institute school uh, that I'm going to introduce you to right now is a main uh, instructor. They teach NRA classes. I never really was a fan of NRA in the past. I must tell you, I had my own little problems, you know, when they started to have uh, the situation with a bilingual um, uh, website. You know, as I said, you know, I'm an immigrant myself and I believe the only language we should speak when we are here in this country, at least in public, English. And I brought this up to them 10 years ago when I was becoming a life member. I didn't like the answer and I got kind of, you know, I just say, okay, I move on, I, I join another organization. Then after these elections, I realize how much really we need everybody. And NRA has a great political, uh, let's say, pressure. So I wanted to put for a moment aside my personal, you know, let's say concern about that uh, philosophy. And I wanted to look at the main core, the core that we need the NRA like we need any other organization out there. And I also wanted to start to reevaluate also their curriculum. They normally I never really pay much attention. I always would look focusing on them like a political force, like a lobbyist force for our gun rights. And then I started to, wow, to realize that they have incredible classes and they have a very, let's say, um, different process and different curriculum from many other schools that I attended. You know, normally I go to train at the uh, front side or other places like that. And don't get me wrong, it's a great training. But for the basic, let's say, uh, average introduction, uh, introduce, let's say introduction classes and the very good information that they can make available uh, in an easy way, I think they have an incredible curriculum and I really like it. 
So I wanted to really challenge myself. And I said, I want to go through every class they're offering. And at the same time, I say, you know what? I would like to share this information. I don't want to just keep it for myself. I've already been doing that in no professional way as a volunteer every time I go to the range. And I say, you know, now I would like to do it professionally. I would like to give the average uh, you know, person out there who wants to start to get at least safer and acknowledging the responsibility that you have as a gun owner to be more proficient, to be safer, and to be able to sh- enjoy this right. Not the sport, it's a right for me. Anyway, so let me cut this short, otherwise you know, you're know you gonna fall asleep out there. Uh, I had the chance and the opportunity and the pleasure to meet this instructor from Las Vegas, he's an NRA instructor, and I attended already several classes you know, when I, you see me on Facebook every Sunday, I live here about 5 o'clock, 5.30, you know where I'm going now. I'm going to study. That's my Sunday, you know, entertainment time. I go to study and I, go, I try to learn and I try to, you know, also go through this process and try to also qualify for my little new accomplishments. And one of those, I was able to, to do the range safety officer class. I was very happy about that. And I did the NRA basic instructor pistol instructor, excuse me, basic pistol instructor class and did that and I'm doing other classes. Now, me shutting up and I'll bring here the special guest of today who will share with you and with us great valuable information. First of all, about his courses, his classes, if you're in the Las Vegas area, but more important also about a basic concept, how to make your home a little bit tougher for the evil bastards out there who want to break in and how to defend yourself in your home. So basic self-defense in the home, okay? His name is Our Chef. Our, are you there? I'm here, how are you, Lucas? I hope you didn't fall asleep with my little introduction, but I wanted to give the idea what's going on here. Was I clear enough, you think, even with my accent? I think you were great. I think uh, you definitely got the information out there. You know, the fact that you talk about the handgun or guns being a tool, it's extremely important. I think that people need to understand um, the NRA has a uh, kind of a policy. We don't use the W word. We don't call guns weapons mm-hmm. um, because of a bad connotation. It's not a weapon. It's a tool of last resort. It's something designed that we use to defend our homes, our family, and, our, and our, ourselves. Like a fire extinguisher. <clears throat> so, you know, let's say I have a, I have a fire in the exactly. house. I need a fire extinguisher. I need to know how to learn and how to use it. Now, before we start into the classes and what you offer, you know, you have an interesting background. I always think, you know, it is more than just teaching something. It's also, even, of course, the NRA curriculum is very strict. You know, you go by the book, you, but also you offer, of course, your own classes. But, you know, every one of us is different. We have different background, and I think it's important because it also reflects who we are as uh, professionals who try to share this information with the public. And I always say, let's also bring a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about you. Who, who is our chef? Well, I'm uh, originally from the East Coast. Uh, I'm married to uh, the love of my life for over 30 years. We're together. Uh, we have two beautiful daughters and two beautiful grandchildren. And uh, so you know, I started out years ago. Uh, hunting was my first introduction to firearms. <clears throat> and uh, I enjoyed it as a sport, but I started to learn more and more. I went. I learned to be a gunsmith. I learned to be an armorer on many different guns because I wanted to learn the functionality of how they how they really worked. What put them together? Uh, then when I t- I enlisted in the Air Force, it was in 1974, the end of the Vietnam War, and I wanted to do my part. I wanted to defend that country. So I went into the Air Force, and I wound up in a uh, SNR team, which is a search and rescue team. I was supposed to be a jet engine mechanic, but uh, they needed people to uh, train to go over and you know, find the missing in action, find the POWs. So I trained for that, and um, I was injured in a, in a training exercise um, after a couple of years in service. After I got out, I, uh, I went into law enforcement. I spent four years undercover. Uh, in narcotics division uh, back east. And uh, I, I learned a lot about firearm safety from being in law enforcement because you don't know what, you know what you're shooting at sometimes. And it's dangerous. It's scary. Uh, I've been in a couple shootings myself, uh, a couple as a law enforcement officer, and a couple personally uh, as a civilian. So, you know, it, it's... An interesting learning experience when that happens. 
you know, the things that happen and, and all the aftermath that, you, that goes through and, and things that you feel. So uh, I decided as I retired, I, I, my family's in the restaurant business for many years back east, and when I retired, I continued my, my sport, my hobby of firearms, and I did what you did. I started taking classes from different places and different things, and I found the NRA. And I realized that they had an incredible curriculum to a point that all of the major you know, military, law enforcement agencies all have started using a lot of the NRA curriculum. They may rewrite it, but they still use the basics that the NRA uses. Um, the, the NRA was started in 1876, uh, yeah, to, uh, it is, to help with marksmanship. 1871 you know, or 76? I'm sorry. 70, 71, I'm sorry. It, it's uh, been a long night. Hey, I'm your student, uh, okay? So I, 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 I just go by what you taught me, okay? I know, I know. You have the numbers <laughs> in front of you. I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head. Um, I'm just playing anyway, with you. That's good. It started back in the 1800s yes. um, to help with marksmanship because during the Revolutionary War and things like that, they were the marksmanship was terrible. So that's where it came in. Mm. And today, you know, they put a curriculum together. All their courses are considered basic. They're, they don't do it maybe really advanced classes. They're considered basic. They're to start the foundation of how to, from, from the point of how to hold a gun in your hand properly, how to stand right, how to, you know, all the fundamentals needed to get you to be a big, good marksman. And that way, you know, if they decided that if they did give you a good foundation, you can build upon it any way you want. Like going to places like Front Fight or other organizations around, or even myself, we do have some advanced training that we mm -hmm. do um, because of my law enforcement military background. I do have some experience in that. Let's talk and about also let's talk about your school before we go ahead. People, you know, give them uh, the website. Give us the website or phone number. At least people can browse your courses. I know you have a beautiful website. Go ahead, please. Okay, so the name of the company is Safe Direction Firearms Training, um, and we have the website is the name www.safedirectionfirearmstraining.com, and uh, you can find all our courses there. You can find information about myself as well. You can uh, learn a little more about the NRA and things that we do. Um, at that website. Our local phone number is 702-524-2322. And like Luca, you know, you travel from Arizona. We have people that travel from California to see us. We wow. have people that travel from Utah. Um, That's great. That's great. Now, let's talk a little bit about, you know, we were talking about pretty much uh, the opportunity for people, of course, to start to learn the basics. And then, of course, uh, this is just a radio show, okay? We're not trying to give you a, a lesson here or a class, but at least uh, basic common sense uh, tips for gun owners uh, that are right now, for example, in their homes. And, uh, you know, try to figure it out. What if somebody, an evil person out there, tried to break in a home invasion scenario? And, uh, you know, Sunday is okay. funny because we're going to go through the pretty much the, the, the class of uh, self-defense in the home. And, uh, and I thought it would be a good topic anyway that you can share with us. And at least, you know, just some basic ideas. That probably many people may say, oh, I know this stuff. But, you know, the point, you never know. Because I tell you, I always say, even whenever I think I know something, I really know that I miss mm -hmm. always something. And what I like about the NRA, they have a very uh, organic curriculum that goes through step by step to things that maybe we know individually, some parts, but we do not have the whole picture presented to us in a professional way, and then we can train because under stress, we're not going to say, hey, wait a second, what should I do here? No, you already have been training, going by the book from A to Z to all the possible scenarios that you can try to imagine. So give us a little bit of, a, let's say, some food for thoughts about how to defend ourselves in our home and how to make our home a little more, let's say, less appetible or, let's say, uh, desirable for criminals to break in. Okay, we, we can start with that. First, to make yourself less desirable is light up the outside of your home. Put more lighting, you know, so that your house stands out in the neighborhood. 
if, if you have a lot of lights, people aren't going to try and sneak in your house. You know, make sure that your windows aren't covered by trees and things like that because, you know, that gives them a place to hide. So you don't want to do that. Uh, things like that. Don't leave ladders or any kind of tools in your yard where they can use them to break in your windows or climb to the second floor if you have a two-story home. Put a burglar alarm. Uh, so let's say you're in your house, you hear a noise in your living room, you're in your bedroom, you're watching TV, you're in bed, whatever it is. We recommend lock your door in your bedroom. Don't go to the hallway and find out what's going on. Dial 911. If you have a firearm, load it. Duck behind your bed. Call 911. Wait there. As they come, you hear them coming down the hallway, scream as loud as you can. I have a gun. 911 has been called. The police are on their way. Leave my house. If you come any closer, I'll shoot. By doing that, you've accomplished a couple things. One, you told the bad guy you're going to shoot him if he's coming any closer. Two, you have shown that you're not really afraid of him. And number three, that was just recorded by 911 on the phone. So in the event that you had to shoot that person, okay, you've now given yourself some legal background. I'm not talking as a lawyer. I'm talking in reality, okay? Um, by, by, like, like I said, every recording that goes to 911 is... Every, every call going to 911 is recorded. So let's put as much information on there. But we don't want to go down the hallway. There are people out there that are training civilians to go down their house and sweep the hallway and look for what's in their, in their house that's making noise. Well, you don't know how many people you're going to confront. You don't know what you're going to find. So why not make yourself in a safe spot, a place you're comfortable, that you know and you control? We recommend build a safe room. The NRA talks about it. We do another course, not only the personal protection inside the home, but we have a course called Refuse to be a Victim. Um, and it's actually a seminar. It has nothing to do about firearms. It's all about home protection and protecting you even when you're out, how to be more aware and things like that. Mm -hmm. And in there, it talks about making a safe room. The safe room doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be like you see on TV where it's got electronic doors and you know, it's bulletproof walls and got cameras and all kind of stuff. No. Make your bedroom your safe room. Make your master bathroom, if you have one, your, your secondary safe room. Change the solid, the hollow door into a solid core door so it's harder to take, you know, go through. Um, keep supplies in there. Keep a flashlight. Keep an extra cell phone. Any cell phone that will power up, whether you have service on it or not, can dial 911. It's a federal law. Okay. So take that old cell phone you have from the 1970s when they first came out or the, the, the newer one from the 1980s, whenever you have it, plug it in. As long as it powers up, you should you will be able to dial 911. Keep that as a spare. You know, if you have a gun, keep a spare gun, keep spare ammunition, keep water, keep food, you know, little snacks. Keep a spare set of keys to your house so that if somebody broke in and you locked yourself in the room, you... And when you're talking to 911, because you're going to be on the phone with them the whole time, they're not going to hang up. And they say, the police are outside, your door's locked. You can say, okay, come around to whatever side of the building you're on. I'll throw a set of keys out the window, and that way they can get in. Because the bad guy locked the door behind him. He's going to. Because he doesn't want anybody sneaking up on him. But that gives the police an opportunity to come in and protect you. Um, get one of those little glow sticks, you know, the ones you break in half and they light up. Hook your keys to that, so if you have to throw it out at night, the police can find it. You know, come up with a passcode. So you tell the police, I'm not coming out of my safe room unless the police tell me this word, because I don't know if it's a bad guy at the door. Mm -hmm. um, so you make the same password with your family. Uh, my wife and my uh, granddaughter, who's lived with us, we always had that, that, that thing. If, if somebody were to break in the house and I wasn't home, they would go to our safe room. The only way that safe room door is going to be open and that my wife's going to put the gun down is if she hears the private password that we've come up with to ourselves. Nobody knows it but us. So if I knocked on the door and said, hey, it's me, let me in, let me in, if I don't give her the password, she will let me in. If I open that door, she's going to shoot because she's defending herself. And that's the way it's trained. So we do the same thing with the police. Just because someone knocks on the door and says, the police, I'm not going to open the door. I want to make sure it's really the police. So they need to know the pa no password. You tell them 911 on the phone. Yes. Tell the police I'll come out when they give me this password. 
Yes, that's um, very good idea about the password. Yeah. Can you, you know, probably everybody say we know, but I always like to say no. Sometimes all I want to reach somebody that maybe doesn't know. So I like always to go in topics that could be easier or just uh, already available out there. Uh, the difference between concealment and cover in the house. How can it help us, and why you we should always study at least uh, uh, go around our place, our home before things happen and start to understand the layout of our home. So what is the difference between concealment and cover? And uh, what should we do when we have time in our spare time around our home to start to practice a little bit? Well, first, actually, Luca, I should ask you that question since you're the student currently and you're taking the <laughs> class tomorrow. Okay. But um, the, the difference between cover and concealment, concealment is just what it is. It will conceal you. It'll hide you from the bad guy. It'll make it so he can't see you. It could be a shadow. It could be the, uh, the sofa or the chair that you have in your house. Now, cover, is, it also conceals you, but it may reflect the bullet. Mm -hmm. It may stop it from, from penetrating through. Uh, it could be something like a solid wood cabinet, you know, a big oak cabinet you might have. Um, old style refrigerator that was the old ones were made of steel and they were pretty strong. Uh, new ones are kind of plastic. So you might want to be more careful, but you know, if you have a safe in your house, uh, even if it's a, a gun safe, you know, that could definitely be, um, cover because it's thick and heavy and it may you know, deflect a bullet. So it's a good idea to know what you could hide behind, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, because if somebody were to break in and, and they started shooting, you know, you certainly don't want to be hiding behind. It's not like TV where you can hide behind the TV, behind the, uh, the sofa and the bullets aren't going to hit you. You want to make sure that whatever you hide behind is going to protect you if you can. If you're only using it for cover so that you can shoot back or just to be out of sight for a moment or two, um, that's fine. But, you know, a wall can also be cover. You know, and not just concealment. And also, you uh, know, the something, uh, you know, I was thinking about, it's always a relative concept because, for example, I can have, a, let's say, a sofa that could be a cover for a 22 uh, caliber, but uh, for sure it wouldn't be a cover for, let's say, 9 millimeter or maybe, I don't know, a rifle round, okay? It's all, it's all concept. Correct. Everything must be always be assessed. What they're shooting us with, you know? Are they shooting us with a regular pistol? Are they shooting us with a center fire rifle? You know, everything could be different in the situation. Um, exactly. Perfect. So, you but know, you all know what that is until the, actually that situation happens. So, but to know what's in your house and know where it's at, you know, one of the other things we tell you about your home for protection is turn out the lights and walk through your house. Mm -hmm. You should be able to walk from point A to point B in the dark without bumping into furniture or tripping over things. Mm -hmm. That's important because the guy that breaks in your house, if your house is dark inside, he won't have that ability. He's going to walk in and he's not going to know where anything is, so he's going to walk into things. Yeah. Don't make straight lines from, from if you have a back door and you have a hallway, don't make a straight line open with nothing blocking it. Put something there so that in the middle of the night, if somebody were to break in your dark house, they're going to bump into something. Exactly. One door alert because you'll hear a noise. Exactly. And another important thing, you know, this is probably for me the most important aspect because we are law-abiding people. We are not trying to become Rambo or other things like that. And also, you know, the role of, uh, let's say, the citizen is to defend life. We are not here, there, like, uh, let's say, when you're a soldier, you charge the enemy. If you're a policeman, you charge the evil. You know, we're here try to avoid to be harmed. That's our type of philosophy we have. So let's say, for example, even we have states like uh, I know Nevada has that type of new law and also uh, Arizona, the, the Castle Doctrine Law, okay? The technique, we can stand okay. our ground, not because we have that law on the book that give us some extra, let's say, a safety zone, you know, from liability and lawsuit and also criminal situation, means that we have to face and go there and shoot a bastard. I mean, if the bottom line, the person, the evil criminal is trying to get out of, of the house, all we care that we are no harm. Am I right or wrong? I mean, is... You're correct. Your, your, your right to defend is only if you are in imminent danger, no matter whether you're in Arizona, Utah, mm -hmm. California, 
Nevada, it doesn't matter. You have to be in imminent danger. Imminent danger means danger right now against grievous bodily injury or death. Mm-hmm. Okay? Which means that person has the ability and the chance right that moment and is attempting or going to attempt to kill you. So if somebody is in your living room and they're taking your 60-inch brand-new widescreen TV off the wall, okay, and you catch him, you can't shoot him. If he runs out your front door, you can't shoot him. You you have to let him go. Yeah, I mean, at least... Um, Unless unless he breaks in your house violently, you can't shoot him. Exactly. And then, of course, you know, as I want to remind to everybody, we are not here uh, giving you any type of legal advices. Every state has a different laws, you know, and for example, Texas streets are also trespassing in a different way. But the point is, there's a general rule and law as a human being, as an American that, you you know, I always say we have guns to save lives, not to take lives. So that's the philosophy we have here. And that's the bottom line, you know, is that bastard is trying to just get out with the television or is trying to rob something and you know that you're safe and he's not on your face. You let the cops handle him and they're going to find him, they take care of him. It's not even worth the bullet, in my opinion, you know, at that point. But if, right. you know, of course, you have the sensation that you really believe that your life is an imminent that means, you know, there is not like a delay, a few minutes later, imminent danger. You or your, let's say, family or other innocent people, at that point you have the right. And, of course, I appreciate the fact that in the state of Arizona, also Nevada, you have at least another extra shield of layer of, of protection by our, leg- our laws that we don't have to be victims. We don't have to do like in California, you know, running around with a whistle and completely, you know, be ready for the next civil lawsuit, even when the bastard tried to stab you, okay? So we have an extra layer of protection, but let's not abuse it. Let's not always uh, forget that life, it's, uh, it's, it's not a game, it's not a video game, and we never want to take a life. We want to save lives. That's our philosophy, at least. Uh, let, me, let, me inter- let me intervene one thing real yes, quick. Yes, please, go ahead. Um, if somebody's stealing your TV or, you know, something from your home, think about its value because if you shoot that person, mm-hmm. okay, more than likely, and not always, but more than likely, you will probably be arrested, mm-hmm. okay, or at least taken in for questioning. In the event that they charge you, all right, a defense lawyer, I think the last survey was somewhere around beginning fees of about fifty to eighty thousand dollars. Yep. To try a case of for shooting. Yep. Okay. So is a TV that costs you two thousand dollars worth taking a chance mm-hmm. of possibly having to pay an attorney fifty thousand dollars, possibly going to jail. Yeah. And even beyond that, there's always that possibility of a civil lawsuit. Because even if you're cleared, at least here in Nevada, even if you're cleared of the criminal charges, there's still that possibility of a a, uh, wrongful death suit or uh, something wrong with those things. Because the family of that person that you had to shoot doesn't see that you had a reason to kill them. Mm -hmm. And we hear that every day on TV when, when a perpetrator is killed, whether it's by law enforcement for committing, when they're committing a crime, or by a civilian who defends themselves, okay? The family of the person who was killed almost always finds a way to file a, a civil action because they think that what their child did wrong. There was a shooting in Florida uh, a few months ago. A young man, a college boy, broke into a home. The, the owner of the home heard, got an alarm call on their phone, got to the house, actually got there before the police, unfortunately. Um, the young man was coming out of her house through the doggy door and threatened to kill her, and apparently, I, I don't know if he had a gun or didn't have it, but whatever it was, she shot him. That night on TV, his sister got on TV and said, you know, I don't understand why she had to kill him. All he was trying to do, he's a college student trying to get by, all he was trying to do is get things so that he can get the things he needed for college. <laughs> so in his family's mind... What oh he was gosh. doing was not wrong. Yeah. That was his way of surviving to get through college. So they immediately filed a lawsuit against this woman 
for five million dollars. Yeah, and there are different mm -hmm. ways to protect yourself. That's why I think always good to educate ourselves, learn, attend classes because uh, many people may already have uh, some sort of ideas how to also protect themselves. But I tell you, these courses they give you also very good information how to have a plan. No just before the shooting but also after the shooting how to handle the situation for example with the law enforcement uh, how to prepare yourself for your legal uh, expenses if you have and uh, there are different aspects and one of those of course so uh, something that probably you know people don't think so much as you said legal fees you know they can be very expensive and if you have an asset clear a paid or even a mortgage doesn't matter there are so many uh, attorneys out there like sharks they will go and will take the case just because they know that they somehow uh, you know you can maybe negotiate at the end and give them some uh, blood money just to shut you up you know I mean to shut them up so it's good to prepare and to have a plan in my opinion for example for what all the when the moment that you carry a gun and you accept the idea that you have you will use it in case you have you are forced to uh, you must have a plan also to defend legally yourself and in every way now briefly you know there are so many things i don't want to go too much into many details what is the best way you would suggest to be prepared as uh, uh, for legal defense in case you have to face the consequences of uh, let's say an arrest or even charges okay so there are multiple um groups uh companies out there that offer defensive shooting insurance and insurance is designed to protect you in the event that you actually have to use your firearm. They will make sure that you have a lawyer. They'll make sure there's a bail bondman. Uh, depending on the level that you purchase as far as insurance uh, will depend on the coverage. I mean, uh, there's uh, the NRA has second choice, and then there's uh, legal fund, and there's a few other ones. I personally use uh, USCCA, um, United States Concealed Carry Association. I, I find that you know, they offer me uh, the coverage that I'm looking for at a reasonable price. I think it's like $360 a year, and I have full coverage um, up to, I think, a million dollars in liabilities and stuff like that. But they cover criminally. Um, I know people who have actually had to use them. I personally have had to use them once. Um, actually, before I ever got to the police station, the lawyer and the bail bondsman were waiting for me. Um, so, you know, there's definitely opportunities to uh, to protect yourself. Yeah, and, and another thing also, you know, I would like to say, this is just my two cents input, because, you know, as I said, I'm not a legal advisor, I'm not, uh, um, you know, any type of attorney, but my personal experience, the moment that you have something in your name that uh, you are afraid to lose, you have something to lose, okay? So I always say, Absolutely. you know, uh, there are many legal forms out there, legally, I'm not talking about to do anything weird, that you can shield yourself and your properties and your values, that at the end of the day, you should, you're should supposed to own, in my opinion, as an individual, almost nothing. I mean, seriously, all I own is a, is a used car, okay? And the rest is nothing. And there are ways. And I just give out there a, a keyword, and uh, people can look at that. As I said, I'm not giving any type of legal advices or financial advice. Go get your CPA, talk to him. But I found for me it works. It's called Family Limited Partnership. Okay, State of Nevada has a very strong uh, legal form as this one, also Wyoming, and uh, it's really uh, powerful in my opinion. And you can defend your assets uh, in a way, legal way that if tomorrow let's say there is some lawyers out there that try just to milk you down uh, guess what they ain't gonna find anything that's the bottom line so that's pretty much and of course i like the idea of uh, us cca i think it's a great plan i love that because i think legal fees you still need to have prepare yourself especially in criminal you know in every way but criminal especially you're not going to play around with that you know and uh by the way i always say you know we're here to give you a service uh, listeners and uh education but it, also we try to help each other here okay i mean uh our there's a guy is a working man he works very hard i see him doing classes and if you have to join the us cca okay go to us cca class offer.com uh, please put his affiliate number 6346 
6346. I mean, at least, you know, he's going to get a couple bucks for himself. You know, we try to give you good information and uh, we try to provide a, a professional service. At the same time, I believe in free market. This is not a government. We never extort your money with a gun on your face. We always ask, politely ask you your support. So if you join the USCCA, you know, go to USCCAClassOffer.com and uh, you can put the affiliate number 6346. So I was going to get a couple bucks for that and that would be helpful. And also I would like to remind, you know, there are different plans. You know, what you were talking about, that was the, the Cadillac plan, correct? I mean, what you got, the yeah. plan. But there are also, Top of the line plan. Yeah, there are also, what is the the silver plan, I think. It's a little less expensive. It's about, what, 50? Yeah, I, I think you have one that's like uh, $20 or $15 a month. Yeah, 15 like bucks that. a month. It's a couple of uh, stupid coffees at uh, at Starbucks. Of course, n you can always save money and get also the Zana coffee. But if you want to get the, the, the good service for a potential, you know, legal representation and insurance, I think USCCA, it's a great thing. And by the way, I'm going to join myself probably this week. Now, that, you know, it's, as I said, the never-ending learning. And I appreciate it for you sharing this information because I think it's a great so One other thing real quick about the USCCA. There's a couple things. Yes. Yeah, I did get a couple dollars. There's no doubt about that. But by joining and using that code, you'll get some free um, video training that they send you by mm -hmm. email that you can watch to help you increase your, your skills. Wow. Um, they give you skill things. They give you a lot of other information they send you uh, by using that code. Because I'm a, a uh, an affiliate instructor, they they want to make sure that we give more information for that code. Um, it's extremely important. The other thing is, is even though it's called the United States Concealed Carry Association, they'll cover you if you're in your home. So if you only have a gun in your house, yeah, and and you're not carrying it outside, if you have to use it in your home, it'll protect you. Yeah, and it will also protect you carried outside. So it's extremely important to remember that. Um, uh, again, my website, I'm going to give you a new short version uh, that we have, and it's NRA Classes NV from Nevada. So NRA Classes NV.com will take you to our website uh, as well as the other one that I gave you. Perfect, perfect. I appreciate it. That's great. Listen, I want to give you the floor. I am almost out of this time for this segment. Uh, you got two minutes. Whatever you want to say. You want to go talk about classes, uh, pitching something, politics. It's up to you. We have complete freedom of speech on this show. Go ahead. Our chef from right. Nevada. Go ahead. All right. Again, my company's name is State Direction Firearms Training. Uh, we give a full gambit of training, starting with the basics of the NRA. The most important thing to remember is that your shooting skills are a diminishing skill. If you don't practice, you will lose your skills. It's important to practice. Don't just go and shoot at a piece of paper and think that you're a good marksman. Start shooting at that piece of paper and looking at it as a threat because that's what you want to do is defend your life or your family. So you need to start shooting at a threat. Don't worry about hitting the center of the target. Hit center of mass. Make sure you just hit that target in a spot that if it was a person, it would stop them. Um, that's the important thing. A lot of people think that if they can take the purple, the red spot out of the center of the target, that they're a winner. Well, yeah, you are. Except I've never, ever, in the years I was in law enforcement, in the years I've been on the street, ever seen a bad guy with a big X on the front of his chest saying, okay, shoot me here. Um, so learn to practice and learn to shoot for self-defense. Look at every target as a threat. Look everywhere around. Don't bury your face inside your cell phone. Be aware of your surroundings and know what's going on. Don't make yourself a victim. Luca, I want to thank you for having me on your show. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in class every Sunday. We have a great time. Uh, this Sunday should be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll... Uh Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, of course, you know, to, to learn all this information from you. And more important, not just to learn, to teach me how to share with others. Because, you know, we can learn and it's, it's a different thing to be able to share in a professional way to the rest of the world. So that's a really important thing you're doing. I appreciate that. Okay, listening, guys, don't go away. We little break. And then we finish this hour. More information. And you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks, 13.40 a.m. Don't go away. Don't tread on Do you want social justice? Now I give you social justice. The Zanna way. Don't trade on us, the Freedom Rifle by Zanna. The most affordable military-grade semi-automatic AR-15 rifle in M4 configuration. Chambered in 223 Wild, they can shoot both 5.56 NATO and 223 Remington. 
four minutes of angle for just $499 made in the USA. Get your freedom rifle now. We need every law abiding American armed with knowledge and at least one military rifle ready to defend good against evil. With every Don't Tread on Us rifle, you will get free parchment replica of the United States Constitution, free digital CD Don't Tread on Us, free ebook How to Become a Rifleman, free t shirt Slaves are never armed, I am not a slave, free 30 rounds magazine were allowed by the law. Free laser engraved ejection port, don't trade on us, for just $499. Go to www.freedomrifle.com, www.freedomrifle.com. Get your Freedom Rifle now. Here we go, back to our number two, final segment. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on Talks 1340 AM. Now... That's why I wanted to tell you this. Um, I am so happy when I can bring you guests like our chef. Because uh, it is about bringing the best I can find for you listeners to open your minds, to have more opportunities to learn, to become a more proficient and more, let's say, also a responsible gun owners. That's what comes down to. Because with freedom comes responsibility. Now, as I said, in uh, for example, in Arizona, we do not need any more... Uh, to have a concealed carry permit. After all, we have what is called the constitutional carry. Now, why you think I still advise you, in my opinion, humble opinion, to apply for an Arizona concealed weapon class, okay? Permit, excuse me. But let me tell you. First of all, in general, I hate, and I don't like to use the word hate, but let's say I am very, have a natural adversity for the word permit. Think about it. It's an individual right, okay? If you have a permit, somebody's giving you a permit, means that somebody is selling you back their right under the form of a permit. So, technically, I do not like and uh, the idea of permits. I don't like them in general because at that point, become privilege. But the point is, since 2010, there was a law that was passed in Arizona, SB 1108. We have the constitutional carry. That means you can... As a law-abiding person, if you're a legal resident or, of course, uh, an American citizen, of course, or a legal resident in the state of Arizona, over 21, be sure you understand that, you can carry a firearm, or even more than one if you want, concealed without a government permit, okay? Of course, there are some exceptions where you can carry or not, okay? Now, people may ask, well, why do I really need to apply for a, an Arizona CCW? Very simple. And I'll give you now six reasons why. And this is, of course, uh, some they are my humble opinion, some they're real facts. And I tell you, even I don't have to have any more that uh, CCW, the Concealed Weapon Permit, I still renew mine. And I had my permit, uh, my CCW permit in Arizona since when I, when the first, pretty much the first month I came here, I apply. Apply as soon as possible. Now, first of all, first reason why you should apply for a CCW, an Arizona CCW. The point is very simple. This is not a game, and uh, you cannot afford mistakes, and the responsibility and education are very important things to consider. But remember, as I said before, with freedom comes responsibility. As the gun owners, we have a huge responsibilities, not only towards us, also towards everybody else out there because every time there is that round coming out of the barrel we are liable for that okay and even if you don't have to shoot the point is there are so many things we can make mistake so it is our duty that we have to learn we want to be proficient and safe at least in handling the firearm that we want to carry okay that's the bottom line and in my opinion it is our duty to seek such training the government doesn't say anymore you have to have that training because technically, you know, even the new CCW classes in Arizona, the standard is pretty much at discretion of, of, of uh, the instructor. But I think you should look for the best training you can get because even if, you, of course, you will never be able to learn everything you have to learn in a few hours of a CCW class, but at least you can get an idea. For example, let's start with the basics, okay? Uh, when when it's legal to use legal, excuse me, deadly force. 
how you want to interact during a stop with law enforcement, where you can or cannot carry a gun. What if you have to face a violent confrontation? How can you avoid it? If you cannot avoid it, how you can somehow be there on top and win that and let's say violent confrontation? Ignorance of the law is not a valid excuse. Don't forget. So for me, uh, these CCW classes are so important because at least they can give you basic foundation in uh, safety. Of course, also in um, knowledge of the basic Arizona laws that you need to comply. And also the opportunity to get uh, some real thinking. What if that happens? And uh, we're not going to go through, for example, normally the, um, the CCW class, the average CCW class out there doesn't even go anymore to the shooting part. So you need to learn that s separately, but not because you have a gun now, you have a CCW, you think, okay, I I'm ready to go in case there is an emergency. No, you need to still find or seek that type of, uh, seek that type of training. So anyway, first thing why I think you should apply for the CCW is called responsibility in education. You got to learn at least to understand what you do not know and what you need to learn. And that's a good foundation. If you find a good CCW class, uh, you will probably uh, at least have that. Now, let me remind you, starting in January 2017, uh, I will start to offer CCW classes in Arizona, especially in Lake Havasu and Kingman. Golden Valley, even Bullhead. And the beautiful thing is going to be a very interesting class and I will give you more details now. And it's going to be not just the basic class to give, well, show you a video and then you go. No. I want to give you the best information. The best, uh, at least uh, completely, I want you almost overwhelmed because I want you to know at least what all the things that you do not know you will say, wow, I do not know this. I do not know, for example, how to react uh, physically, uh, present a gun into a fight in, in a real confrontation at colloquial distances. You know, how do you need to train for that? That's not something we're going to be able to, let's say, teach you during a CCW class. But at least we can give you some real life scenarios. And on top, of course, as I said before, we will talk about the laws, what to do, what not to do, how can you carry, the best way to carry, and many other things. So anyway, first reason why I think you should look into get a CCW in Arizona, because it's called education. It's a duty that you have towards yourself and your community. Okay. Now, number two. Now, the very good, important benefit, my opinion. No background check when you purchase a firearm. Remember, when you purchase normally firearms without background, excuse me, without uh, CCW, they need to run uh, the basic, um, you know, uh, NICs calling the FBI and blah, blah, blah. So probably sometimes you have to wait a few hours, maybe nothing. But the point is they also may be waiting three days sometimes. Uh, with a CCW, they can just get a copy of your CCW, a copy of your ID, they put you in the book and with the FFL dealer and you're good to go. So that's something very good for me. Worth it. I like to buy guns with my CCW. Now, number three. This is personal. May not apply to everybody, but happened to me. I really believe when you have a CCW, you may improve the quality of the potential encounters with law enforcement. What does it mean? That means, for example, I've been pulled over a couple of times the last few years by DPS. I, they even didn't give me a ticket. It was just a warning. They were really nice people, by the way. I got great DPS encounters so far on the 40 and one time on the 68. The point is, they know the moment that uh, they pull you over, I'm sure they can find out. After all, the DPS releases the CCW. They can see your license plate and they probably is connected to the fact that you have a driver license and, of course, a CCW. The point is, when the law enforcement figure it out that you have a CCW, one thing at least he knows that you are not a felon because otherwise you will not be able to obtain the CCW. That's a good start. You think about it. Put, put yourself in their, on their side. You may be anybody. You may be a person just escaped from jail. Maybe you may be a wanted fugitive. So the moment that you have a CCW, you say, okay, this guy maybe goes a little too fast or maybe he done something not correctly, but he's not a criminal. He's not a felon. That's very important. So for me, it was always very positive. I really believe that the CCW in my situation, probably gave uh, the opportunity to the law enforcement to have a little more calm attitude. They're really nice. Normally, they can ask you to remove your gun and uh, give them to them for the time of the encounter. Uh, for me, they told me both times, by the way, you can keep your guns on you. We know you are. You're fine. So I was very pleased. Now, part three, question, excuse me, part number four. Carry permitted uh, in restaurants, they allow 
conceal carry. Okay, bottom line, you can carry now a loaded weapon, a loaded gun in restaurants where alcohol is served if you have a CCW, an Arizona CCW. Now, which conditions must be met? First of all, the weapon must be concealed. Okay. Number two, of course, you must have an Arizona CCW. And number three, you must not consume alcohol. That's so important. But people say, wow, yes, wow, this is really good because before you could not even walk in at all. You had to leave uh, your gun in the car with liability. So I think this is really good because I think it met uh, good conditions of uh, common sense and safety. After all, let's say you go out at night with friends. Um, one is going to be the designated um, driver and also the designated uh, safety officer, or at least the person in charge that will not drink, will drive the car, and also will carry a gun with a concealed weapon. You can go into a restaurant, people can have fun, his friends can drink or whatever. Meanwhile, the driver is going to be also the person in charge of security. I think that's very important because you know very well what happens when you're a little bit, you know, relaxed, loose, drunk, having fun. That's where exactly criminals may just start to realize that you're a victim. That's why it's so good for me if you go out with a friend, one person have fun and drinks, the other one just stay there, enjoy the party, but without drinking, with a CCW, you can also carry your gun into the establishment. Of course, always if the establishment allows it, because that's private property. But guess what? If it doesn't allow it, find another place. That's my attitude. Anyway, point, point number five. When you have a CCW, guess what? You may have a great privilege to be reciprocated. I mean, that CCW can be, that is not a CCW can be reciprocated at least in 35 states. That's huge. So let's say, for example, you go on vacation to Nevada, next door to us. Uh, guess what? You can check because sometimes they change every year. But for example, two years ago wasn't, now, then it, now it is. So, but the point is we have 35 states that reciprocate this Arizona CCW. Now, this is great, because I tell you, just living here, and if you had to go to Nevada, that's a very important thing, in my opinion. But always you have to check with the state where you're going, because some states may change overnight, and they don't care that you knew or not, you can get in trouble, so you got to check. Now, another very important thing, not because you have a CCW, you go in another state that maybe is reciprocating it, you must uh, somehow have, uh, with you, comply with the Arizona law. No, you must comply with the state law, that state that you're going to, okay? That's very important. So, something to consider also. Hopefully, in the next few months, tr the Trump administration, uh, as promised, President Trump said that uh, he committed to the NRA to create this sort of uh, federal states, across the state, CCW. I think something very important. So hopefully we can go through that. Now, point number six, six reasons, uh, see, reason why I really believe you should apply for a CCW in Arizona. 1,000 feet schools, gun-free zone. Yes, uh, technically there is a federal law that, uh, this is from the Clinton administration. If you walk, let's say you, even you're driving, okay? Or if you walk, just outside the school, not on the school property, but 1,000 feet in the radius from the school, even let's say you're driving your car, minding your business, and you have a gun on you, even it's legal technically in the state of Arizona to have a, excuse me, a concealed uh, weapon without permit, but technically, if you do not have a CCW, 1,000 feet gun-free zone, thanks to Clinton, that's supposed to apply to you. Probably nobody ever enforced it, Hopefully nobody will ever enforce it, but this is something to consider in my opinion, because it's very scary. So with the CCW, that's no more problem, okay? You can be driving 1,000 feet, within 1,000 feet, or walking within 1,000 feet. If the weapon is concealed, you have a CCW, you're fine. Now, another important thing, school. Technically, you cannot go on the school, let's say, uh, property. Uh, even in the car, if you do not have a CCW, you cannot go. Okay, with your gun on the school property. But if you have a CCW, you can meet these conditions. That means the gun must be unloaded and you can stay in the car. That's good. At least you can drop your kid with a gun unloaded on you and no drama. You do not need to, you do not need to leave the gun at home. And in case you need to go, let's say, inside the school, you must leave your gun 
into the into the car, locked, unloaded. It is something. I mean, it is not perfect because I think it's stupid. Because after all, you know, you will know very well that a, a criminal bastard, or at least a psycho, is not going to comply with any of these laws. Hopefully, we can pass a state laws that we can have guns also on schools, you know, for law-abiding person, starting from the teachers, of course, and the principals, and also the parents. But right now, meanwhile, you know that you have something. You can carry the gun at least in your car, unloaded on you, or in case you had to leave the car locked, okay, without the ammo. Now, this is pretty much the six main reasons why I really believe you should consider to have a CCW. Now, I want to offer you this service. It's a social service, what I call, uh, for me, uh, sharing wealth and compassion. A free, and I say again, free CCW class to every single mother in Mojave County. If you listen to the show, even if you're not a mother or even if you're not a single mom, share with some friend, any single mother that wants to seek that training to apply for a CCW class, we will give you, I will give you the free class. We have places in Havasu, places in Kingman. Please, all you have to do, go to this website. It is my website. And go to Arizona Concealed Carry Permit.com. Arizona Concealed Carry Permit.com. Or you can send me an email, Zanna, Z A N N A at zana.us i want to offer free ccw classes for this to get ccw for the state of arizona to single mothers and people with real disabilities if you have a back pain don't come don't show up okay but if you have a real disability documented that you are on record uh, i would like to help you and i will give you a free class that's for me the act of love because after all you know it's very important in my opinion that the mother single mom has that training they also can share with their son or daughters, even just for safety, okay? Just to know how to handle a gun. That's the bottom line. And then, of course, anybody else wants to apply for the class, we got the best prices in the county, just $85. Go to Arizona Concealed Carry Permit. Ready, ready to start in January. The first week and the second week, we already got classes ready to go, okay? Okay, guys, don't go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna, ready for our He's number three. Songwriter. Ciao. A poet, a rifleman, I'm not afraid. and a constitutional activist, I'm not afraid. Italian by birth, I'm not afraid. American by choice, Gianluca Zana, I'm not afraid. and his new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom, 16 powerful songs on one CD from the heart of a patriot. For download or to order the CD, go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. That's www.lovegunsfreedom.com. Lyrics for your mind, music for your heart. John Lucazana's new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom.